Hi. <laughs> What's up, everybody? Chef Billy here, bringing you Super Saturday. We've got a bonus game coming in here at 2 p.m. Eastern with Mythos Gamera going against Utah. But we have a lot going on today. We're going to be here for three games. Uh, I slept in way too long this morning because I did not know we were having a game and I needed sleep because I'm an old bastard. But I got Joker, Ray, and Headrammer here on the desk with me today. And I tell you what, this is a EU slot, but it's an NA game. Joker, tell us about these two teams. I'm really excited for this. Uh, this is a, mat a rematch between the uh, midseason uh, finals matchup uh, between Mythos, Gamera, and the Utah Academy Blues. Uh, where Utah Academy Blues did come out on top, but uh, I think things have changed since then, Billy, and I think uh, a lot of the Preds are going to show that here. Yeah, I mean, we've got some we got some very interesting Preds in there. I've been watching kind of Gamera from the side, and I've also been watching Utah, not only here, but also EGF. I was looking at them through NECC and everything else going on. Ray! Give me your thoughts about this matchup. Like uh, like Joshua said, we are getting a rematch of the midseason finals. What do you think has changed for Gamera that a lot of the desk has, so far is predicting the win from them? Yeah, I think um, their most recent matchup they had in week eight, because we're not going to count the winner's finals because uh, Mr. Headrammer informed us that that was a forfeit. But in week eight, what, the final week of the play, uh, the regular season, they did play each other. It was not a forfeit, and Mythos did 3-0 them. So the most recent results show that they had a dominant victory. So may I think that's what's giving a lot of the desk and a lot of the casters some confidence in Mythos. And Mythos has just been kind of seen as like, a favorite in, I mean, obviously the last midseason, but even coming into the season, I think a lot of people were looking at Mythos because uh, they, they've just been together for so long and they're a very well-oiled machine. All right, and as we take a look at our Preds, I'm going to head over to Headrammer, mastermind of all Me? the CGL. Yeah, you, mastermind of the CGL. <laughs> uh, did not get to see uh, our dear Headrammer because we were in uh, Arlington last week and he had to hold the fort down here. But, I mean, you've got this going. Uh, in, in favor of Utah, and you've also got it going a full seven. Uh, I was watching yesterday uh, from work, and then on my way home, the the banger that happened yesterday. Geo, rip your voice, Hunter. I hope that you got lots to drink. But Alex, I mean, why do you have this so close? Why do you think this is going the full seven? Well, I think I think the two teams are both incredibly skilled, and we saw in the midseason it went the distance. It went the full five maps, the three two in terms of uh, Utah there, and. I know there's there's a little bit of like you know recency thing of like uh, you know our, the week eight matchup between the two where supposedly you know Mythos got the upper hand, but we call that recency bias. Okay. <laughs> Additionally, <laughs> I think it really shows that when it counts, you know when things are on the line, aka in the, you know a bracket tournament format, Utah does show up. Additionally, the, bra the brackets allow you, you know it's, it's loser picks. It's not it was just not their maps they liked in the uh, in that week eight match. You know. If they get a map that one, okay, we, we just picked a better one for ourselves. They, they start out strong and keep going back and forth. And But the teams are close. The teams are close. They got two maps to choose in the week eight because they, they went in as a, as a higher seed. So they actually got to pick all three maps, if I remember correctly. Week, week eight uh, is regular season. They're predefined maps. Okay, so map pool. Fine, fine, whatever. We'll see how it goes, Alex. Jeez mm -hmm. Louise. I, I also want to go with some recency bias. Yeah, I mean, Illinois fun. State got their got their asses handed to them last night by Maryville. Oh my God, three yeah. one. Yeah, uh, I was not expecting that. Having seen them on land, the mom uh, Ray, you can attest to this. They were absolutely dominant, and then they just got kind of put outside and said, uh, "You know what? You can sit on the porch for the night, Redbirds. We'll see how they do in the lower bracket run." But as it the stands, uh, caster predictions, uh, Joker. I mean, how do you think the the two casters? Uh, have brought this up. We're going to take a look at it as uh, our, our fill-in producer, Blizzard. Love you for being here for us. Balsy says 4-1 Mythos. Geo, and nice. Geo. Now, I will say... Hi, Geo. Geo has two predictions. Now, uh, those are his bets, uh? right? Uh, the the Utah. But his dice, his dice has picked it. Uh, uh, Mythos to win 4-3. So, what's going to be... Right Is he copying off a of Bullskunk now? No, he's yeah, he, he is copying Volskunk. I said the same the thing. For a while. He's been doing the dice for a while, too. I think they both started doing the dice. Yeah. Well, so, I mean, that's what we're called. About... Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, <laughs> dice, it's a dice prince cult. Oh, my Lord. It's all starting here. Okay, 
well, I mean, let's take a, a now that we've got it all kind of set up here. Um, we're looking at a mid-season patch coming up on Tuesday. I believe a new patch is going to drop through because it just downloaded and ate up my bandwidth last night. But looking at these two teams, I mean, we, we talked about the recency bias. We talked about previous results. What do we think uh, between the two teams is going to separate them? Joker, I want to head off to you first. You've seen them a little bit more than a lot of us here on the desk. What do you think is going to separate Mythos from Utah here in the grand final? Um, so... Uh, Gamera told Geo, our caster, um, one of the casters for today, uh, Dizzy uh, on the tank roll for them is a real difference maker. And I think right now, especially with the the, the kind, I, I won't say it's up in the air, but the, the flexible nature of the tank roll at this moment in time, uh, you really need to have a stable tank player. Uh, to, and that can run through a different, uh, different, no, uh, number of tanks and not just stick on that Arisa any longer uh, and be able to just be heal botted and whatnot and staying alive. I think helping, uh, keeping Dizzy, uh, no, um, keeping Dizzy alive, keeping them be able to run um, at Utah is going to be really uh, a really fun thing to watch, especially since you like to run Brawl here, Billy. And Ryan is kind of a sneaky pick um, if you run it correctly here. We did see that a bit this weekend at the land. Uh, we've seen it kind of popping up here and there through the CGL playoffs as well. Ray, I mean, we, we've talked about Arissa getting her knees cut out from under her. I am so pissed off about that still because uh, she is the best tank ever. But, uh, I mean, we've seen a, a steady diet of her mantra. We've also seen Malga kind of slip uh, into the fray, uh, especially running with a Baptiste, being able to, you know, use that cardiac overdrive, dive in get the damage and then get the heck out with the Lucio speed boost. What do you think uh, about, you know, that coming into this matchup? Do we think that we're going to see uh, the Ramatra, the Malga, uh, maybe as, as Joker said, a Reinhardt, uh, I'm thinking that we might see some monkey as well, just depending on how these two teams, what maps we go to, where we decide to go. What do you think the tank matchup especially is going to be like here? with Blizzard as producer. Okay, it looks like a Ray's mic has uh, glitched out on us, unfortunately. So he's going to take a look and see what's going on there. But oh, Alex, I hello? Mean... Are we good there? Oh, right, we got you now. Okay, sorry about that. Basically, uh... it's just going to come down to the flexibility. <laughs> just the tanks being able to play what they're comfortable in, but having the ability to swap to something to counter what the other team is doing well. Yeah, and, and Alex, uh, you know, we talk about this being a platform for players to kind of get their faces known and stuff like that. Uh, ran into a couple of CGL alums as well as some CGL casters there in Arlington. Sky Sniper Panther uh, that used to play down in Tier 2 is now playing for Arizona State University and Sky Sniper is playing for Blinn College. Uh, I mean, talk to us about that, you know, how this can propel you. Uh, into the higher stratospheres of competition because it's something we don't really talk about a lot at CGL. I mean, me and Jeff and a lot of other casters have made our bounce from here going to the higher levels. Now we're seeing the players do the same thing. Talk about a little bit about, about, about that with us. Yeah, I mean, that's that's what it is because a lot of stuff being a player is kind of just getting your name out there. I mean, you can have the skills, but if you don't have the, the platform to show them off, whether it be, you know, a match or a stream, your personality on like an interview or a broadcast like unfortunately i mean whether you like it or not you have to be known somehow and it's very difficult to be known without being either an utterly absurd player or someone who has like the personality and ability to show themselves off and at a place like this where you know you start at those lower ranks and you know work your way up or you can start on console and then swap to pc and there's a lot of just kind of ability to make what you want out of it and be involved to whatever dedication level you want you could be you know you could be that person who works that you know that dad that works the nine to five every day and then uh, um comes home scrims a game of overwatch 
or something like that. Um, you, you can be that, per that kid who, like, wants to just hard grind a game, get better, get better, swap platforms, and then, you know, go off to Collegiate, go off to, like, OWCS. I mean, it's really what you make it. I mean, we saw, uh, I believe that we saw uh, just the other day with the match that we cast, Joker. I mean, we saw some of the members that was from here from CGL competing on basically what was Team Mexico mm -hmm. uh, in our in our grand final the other day. So, I mean, th there's a lot of room for growth. I mean, talk to me while we got like four minutes left here before the game starts. Tell me about your journey real quick, and then we'll go to Ray. We'll get your thoughts after. Me? My journey? Yeah, your journey here. Oh my goodness, my journey here started way back during COVID, and, and I just start, I was bored, right? I didn't have anything to do, uh, <laughs> and so I uh, joined a team, uh, No Sympathy Academy, Tier 2. Um, then we got kind of kicked out of the org, because they didn't like us, and we changed our name to Team Cement, and we made it all the way to the um, Grand Finals, kind of got dumpstered in the Grand Finals, but... Uh, in the mean, uh, in the midst of all that, I was able to join the CGL stream team because way back in the day, you couldn't produce without a capture card. And I was one of the lone people that in the server had a capture card, so I joined in, produced, really scuffed the uh, productions. We won't talk about that. Yeah. Was, <laughs> that was just my it was my first time doing anything to do with like a production uh, sort of standards and. Uh, I found my niche in casting. I like casting a lot more. I like being that voice, right? Uh, especially since, like, I'm a traditional sports fan. Those calls yeah. that you hear in every big highlight, I wanted to be that person, right? And I think I've been able to do that a couple times here for CGL. And other places as well, like uh, I'm doing a high school league. That I love yep. meeting those players. I get to do their uh, land sometimes. And I get to meet them. They revere me as a, like a celebrity somewhat, right? They ask for me. I don't know butter. why you're such a right? <laughs> I don't know. I, I'm just some guy, right? I, and they ask for my pictures. No, they, seriously. They ask for us. Uh, they ask for the, the parents ask me to take pictures with their kids. It's it's crazy that something it's surreal. Could, it's uh, something could come from just this game that I, I picked up because I didn't have anything to do uh, during COVID. Right. Was, Let's go to Ray yeah. real quick. Yeah, because you're you're play by yeah. playing yeah. right again. Uh, Ray, real quick, give us your quick journey, like 90 seconds, uh, because the casters are like chomping at the bit to get into this game. Oh, uh, so basically similar route. I started playing this game um, in CGL on a team. It was big dogs. Um, Ended up being a captain for that team, and we worked our way up from tier one all the way to tier two. And then it was like, I'm like, I suck at this game, but I understand it very well. So uh, why don't I try casting? Because uh, I think I'd be better at that because I have a good understanding of the game. And uh, during, I think it was the year after COVID where we had our, you know, DDoSing situation. Uh, the season after that, me, Tiny Sam, we just grinded CGL, grinded CGL, and worked our way all the way up to where we are now, and it's just really awesome. I mean, it's good to meet you last weekend, by the way. Ray is a very oh, yeah. big, uh, very big person, a very big guy. I'm taller than him still, though, but let's take a look at the rosters real quick before we throw over to uh, Bowsey and Gio. We'll take a look at Mythos Gamero first. Here are your combatants here for the grand final here in the NAGM tier. It's going to be Laura, Trisky, Dizzy, Funjin, and Water. And uh, Water has promised me that they will not screw up this time. So, Water, I'm holding you to it, sending me Twitter DMs while I was on land trying to cast the games. So it was very uh, insistent <laughs> upon they're not going to screw this up. So I'm holding you to this uh, Water lore. If somebody that I have known for a while here absolutely will pop off, we'll take a look now at Utah and their lineup. And here it is. And it is Zeus, DJ Ashtray, Kirsten, Nyla and Spicy Toast. Spicy Toast has been a standout flex support or main support here for this Utah Academy team. Also, watch for Kirsten because they do have a fantastic flexibility on the tank roll. I'm definitely looking forward to this matchup. But look, without further ado, and only a couple seconds behind, let's throw it over to Bowsy and Geo, your your casters for this match. NAGM tier grand finals. Let's go. 
Blizzard to need us. Thank to you very much, gentlemen. Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to the CGL Season 13 North American Grand Masters Grand Finals here. My name is Balzi. I'm joined here by Theo on the cast, and tonight and today, Geo, we're in for one heck of a matchup. One hundred percent. These two teams obviously have duked out this entire season trying to figure out if they are the best of the best. And even though they have only played one match against each other once here, so we'll have to see if they're going to be able to live up to the expectations here and get themselves in a position to win this. Of course, it is Mythos Gamera versus UTOW Academy Blues. So we'll have to see which one is going to get the better of them in this matchup. Yes, you, you missed what I said because um, I got a little confused there. I was just so focused in on looking at these rosters and thinking about these teams. Why why it said was the the book of CGL is open, the history book, and soon another name is going to be etched into it. We saw that yesterday in in EU, where there was a seven map finals, and we were able to see a team cement their legacy. Now we've got two two teams here that are just ready. They're they're hungry for it as well. They've they've got history. Mid-season tournament, this exact same matchup happened. UTO went over. This time, a lot of people have Mythos, so it's going to definitely come down to how these teams take that history into account as they play tonight. 100%. Of course, it is that rematch that we're all waiting for from that midseason tournament. Also, the first time that these teams have met up since earlier in the regular season, the last match of the regular season, if I am not mistaken here. So it's definitely going to be interesting to see if Mythos Gamera have learned their mistakes, know what they're going to be expecting, and are willing to try and bring the pe pressure on and take this victory for their own here and get their revenge up against the University of Toronto Overwatch Academy Blues. We're heading into our first map here soon, though, Gio, and the, the choice is the Paul here for the first map of the series, so we'll have to see if this Brawly style is going to play to the team to these teams' advantages. Well, we've seen a lot of Ramatra in the meta right now, and a lot of um, levels of the game has taken over Arissa as the kind of key, uh, almost default kind of meta choice. So, in a brawl scenario, you're looking for those Ramatras to come out. Um, Reinhardt also can get played. We saw some very risky strategies of Reinhardt recently, but you obviously classic with the village, you know, TPing onto point, TPing around, using that Symmetra, uh, where we've seen a lot of Symmetra based brawl compositions also find its value. It's on those maps of both Shrine and Sanctum where you're looking, you know, will your brawl be good enough? If you're not going to play the Ramatra, how are you going to counteract the fact that you're getting spammed into with those long sight lines? There's lots to play for, but it's Shrine that we will be opening in. Yep, as we load out here into the Shrine, you see the two teams waiting on either side of the playing field here. Interesting to note here, Geo. obviously the starting lineup said Dizzy was coming in for Mythos Gamera, but it's actually Target coming in here to start off for the tank roll. So a little bit of different synergy here for Mythos Gamera could be par partially a detriment for them because they don't have that main tank player, but still, we'll have to see if they're going to be able to perform to their expectations. Yes, and um, one thing to know is that Target and so uh, you know now you have Target here, part of the group leading the charge as your tank. You're looking for how they're going to really match up against Kristen, who's on the similar um, tank of Ramatra. Now these compositions have a little bit of difference with the Moira. You've got a lot more sustain, but also. A little less spam, you're looking to play a little bit closer and build that coalescence versus the Baptiste who's got more output as in more danger of getting followed up on. Yeah, definitely. As the two teams meet up in the center, you're already seeing those healers get to work trying to keep the Ramatras alive, both of which are in that nemesis form, pushing forward, trying to get throw those hands into the enemy team. But meanwhile, Laura, a little bit too far outstretched, gets killed out by Zeus on the Torbjorn to start off this engage. UTO Academy Blues starting to make their way in. Spicy Toast gets rid of the Lucio of Fungin, and now Mythos Gamera, without their speed boost, are looking worse for wear. Turgon, however, does get an equalizing kill onto Zeus here. Still, it's an opportunity here for Mythos Gamera, but it's dwindling away. 
Yeah, that was a good initial elimination there. Now UTO have the point and you're starting to come up to some of those. Uh, oh, that's a good la uh, last minute elimination. Uh, starting to look at these ultimates coming up, right? Nalia will definitely have Coalescence in this next fight. Beat is twice as close to doing twice as much as Fungin right now in terms of output, which is something that we've you know seen and um throughout the past games of this team spicy toast being a constant uh, winning factor so now as mythos gamera make their way back in target is going to be taking this right side see spicy toast on the edge yeah. and a beautiful vortex field to send them to the ground and set up a perfect headshot from lore now that the lucio is out of the picture here for the academy blues they need to try and keep themselves sustained but they are able to get rid of lore so that is a good start here mythos gamera making their way in but the coalescence from nyla gonna be keeping them back away from the front lines nyla just pushing forward with this moira trying to burn down the competition but now turgid has this annihilation on board trying to burn down their enemies kristen however is gonna get the better of them with their own annihilation finding three in the fight and clearing the field Beautiful stuff. It all came to the timing. Those ultimates, you know, Target was able to keep their team alive, then push in with that annihilation. It was when it was counteracted. Able to hold on to your sound barrier as well for Academy means that this final fight is going to be very tough for Mythos. You're going to really want to build this overclock and get as much value with it. However, that follow up with the Blizzard, that's probably your biggest win condition because the sound barrier is going to be tough for Lorer to deal with. As the move comes in here from Gamera, they're going to initiate with that amplification matrix. Spicy Toast does use that sound barrier to begin, but Lore is taken out of the equation before Fungin can at least theirs. Once again, that Sojourn dying first in the majority of these fights. Water's going to try to bring it back here with the Blizzard. They've frozen up Kirsten on the objective, and they're going to be burned down by that May. DJ Astray looking to spit some fire beats here on the side. Not able to get anything, however, as the rest of their team is dying, and Mythos Gamera looking to take back this objective. They do get the kill on the Trisky, as well as on the turn. Target, DJ Astray starting to finally spin those records in a way you've never seen it before. It's not, however, going to be enough. A spicy toast is removed. DJ Astray, however, doesn't care. They found a third. Yeah, and that's an opener now, but it was a risky play by Mythos not to utilize the overclock, but now you have it for this next fight, so that might just be your saving grace. There's no answer for it yet from UTO. We'll have to see. Price flips over here for UTOW and barely Ooh. Mythos Gamera able to touch the point, but it's for Fungin's life. Laura now has his overclock. Needs to try to find the crucial kill to make this fight continue on. Kirsten is removed. So is Zeus, but still DJ Ashtray is running rampant on the sidelines. Trisky now removed out of the equation as Laura's looking for anything right now, but just can't land the shot when it matters the most. DJ Ashtray on the Sojourn continuing to just rain havoc, and it's going to sprell bring UTOW Academy Blues over the line it seems Fungin trying to stall it out but can't touch the point in time as the first point goes over to the University of Toronto yeah and there's Nalia getting that coalescence again and you know when you compare it to the window it almost works synergetically better on control because window that means you need to now be stationary you're controlling that lane whereas if you have a coalescence you can push through it so compositionally going for the Moira had definitely worked out best for the side of Academy Blues also, Laura just struggled to find what they were looking for with that overclock. Didn't quite get those eliminations to, you know, really you know, justify a lot. Um, now, moving on to Village. It's similarly going to be a very strong choice to go for this brawl. Not many changes, but the fact that you now have Zeus on Reaper, rather than playing with a with a May means that Kristen has to be a lot more careful of looking out for those May walls so that they don't get cut off because you don't have that May wall for yourself. Absolutely, that May wall can be a detriment if you are placed on the wrong side of it, but the University of Toronto looking to just scale on this high ground, looking to set up a dive attempt, just trying to dive right on top of Mythos Gamera, maybe split them off and try to force out the wall so that they can make a perfect engage. Gamera currently put up on the objective here with the symmetric turrets as now Kirsten is going to be moving in on the objective. That May Wall, however, does keep them separated from the rest of their team. Gamera's going to get the point for now, but so far there have been no eliminations until Fungin steps into the line sight of DJ Ashtray and gets their head chopped off. DJ Ashtray just continuing to light up this field. Yeah, DJ Astro's been putting it down, laying down the law a lot, and you know, once you're able to just build up one of your real guns, find a shot, you can follow up perfectly. 18-0 to zero so far for Astro, and 
not awful for Mephos. They were able to contest that point and get some percentage, which is what their that's our win condition. That's what they want to play because they don't have you know that you know upfront burst. You know you want to set up with uh, with the Baptiste. Now, however, Nalia coalescence and coming. This is going to be a very quick fight coming from Academy Blues. As Academy Blues trying to set up here on this first engage, looking to try and initiate with that coalescence as Nyla is going to use it here to try to force back Mythos Gamera. They force out that immortality field from Trisky, but the wall is there from water to keep them away from the rest of their team. Turget dropping extremely low there, forced to try to block, but unfortunately will fall to the hands of Zeus. And now UTOW continuing to, to hold this point for their own. Yeah, Mephos are struggling to get into their stride here, where you two are really just packing up. Not, but they only needed to use that one coalescence. All the rest of the ultimates are ready now. Of course, Laura's behind on the overclock because they've only now just kind of swapped on to that character. Big alt fight incoming. You know, looking out for the placement of the Blizzard. Spicy Toast doesn't have beat yet, but we'll get it very shortly. Once you get that beat out of Spicy Toast, then you can start to play. Oh, but the Blossom comes out here from Zeus into the back line. Lore is caught by him. Water tries to throw the Blizzard, Whoa. but gets cancelled out. Everything goes wrong for Mythos Chimera. And then now the Tur University of Toronto one fight away from capping this objective and taking the map. In 2024, you don't really, you know, prepare enough in your mind to deal with a <laughs> blossom from the top rope like Zeus just gave them. But that's exactly what's just happened. Now a panic last fight's gonna have to happen. They need to touch here, so they're going to need to force through. Perhaps use Amp before this fight even begins. Here comes that Annihilation from Turgid as they touch the point, but DJ Ashtray's overclock already finds the kill onto Water before the beat from Fungin connects. Trisky also removed from the fight as Kirsten pops their own Annihilation just to burn down the field in retrospect. And the University of Toronto doing a very good job showing up when it matters here on the first map and taking it very convincingly. Well, you, Academy Blues, they don't want to have the same result as the upper finals. They don't want to get free owed by Mythos. They've already changed that, but what they do want to repeat is what happened in the midseason when they beat Mythos. And this is a great way to start. Uh, you know, it sets up your momentum nicely, but otherwise, you know, they are just a team that's come into this warmer. It gives them that, you know, beginning edge over them in their scoreline and in, you know, in the other lanes of battle, the mental lane of battle, um, the momentum lane of battle, but there's plenty more time to play with, folks. It's a first to four. There's enough time for the likes of Mephos to get back into us, for Gamera to start to take it into their own, um, into their own game. Yeah, definitely. There is potential here for Mythos Gamera. We did see some signs of hope, but. I mean, you look at the you look at the scoreboard here, Geo, and there's not a lot to go <laughs> off. Considering DJ Ashtray has an error KDR compared to Lore's five and seven, that speaks volumes right there. I mean, you don't really need to say much, right? You know, it speaks for itself. It's clear as day, and in a in a, in a meta where Shocker sojourns very strong, this is going to be very important. So. Uh, having your player be able to have a peak like that, I mean, if this continues, then I, I, I'm, I'm afraid for this being just a, a clean sweep, but perhaps, like I said, they're just the team that's coming to this warmer, they are just a little bit more prepared to get right into it. You know, we do know that, of course, the side of... Um, uh, Mephos, we're, we're playing with Target there, you know, a, a newer player, uh, but ultimately now they get to choose the map now they get to decide things for the series yeah so there is the potential here for mythos gamera to put it into a situation where they are more comfortable obviously not having your main tank player in means you're probably not going to have as much comfort as you would hope for in the start of this matchup so we'll have to see if they want to play to something that target is more used to if they want to play a sigma if they want to try to go for a poke style if they want to go for a dive style here geo mm -hmm. so we'll have to see what they decide to go for for a hybrid map to try and set themselves up for exactly that situation yeah, and on top of like just the fact that uh, Academy seem to just be like mechanically just on the ball already, their decision making and when they're utilizing their ultimates for their for their grander scale economy of the of the map is already very much on point. They know what their big ults are and they know what they can expend first to try and see if they can get it out. And that kind of pincer play 
on Village where the Blossom came down from the top and you saw um, their tank push in, uh, getting the big uh, cleave with the punches of Ramatra. That was just a one-two punch that worked perfectly and it's plays like that that will win you maps in the Grand Finals. So seeing more of that from uh, Gamera where they're predicting more of the next fight, they're thinking two steps ahead also, then we're going to see much more of that kind of big battle that we're looking for between these teams. So we'll definitely see what that plan is going to be here from the side of Mythos Gamera. And we actually just got word of what their map choice is here for Hybrid. Hollywood apparently is the call here for the side of Mythos Gamera, which very interesting map choice there, Geo. It's a map that can tend to a bunch of different styles, so... With Hollywood being that map choice, we'll have to see what they're planning on. Yeah, if I've learned anything, uh, I, I think ultimately Hollywood is just a little bit more unpredictable than some other map types. Um, and I, I think I learned that lesson yesterday. There's pretty much a lot that can go on here, but ultimately you're looking at dives very strong, lots of high grounds. Controlling those high grounds will do a lot for you, but also massive lanes of spam damage, of poke damage. So it's really now we can see those kind of two ideas maybe come into play. Now, I do know that Academy do prefer... Um, to play the brawl, uh, they are like a brawl leaning team, so we could still see something like even a queen come out where you're playing for those rotations, slower rotations to build onto the high ground and then burst onto the opponent. So, yeah, like you said, many ways to play it. Yeah, definitely. Hollywood is, is that very varied map. You can run all those compositions, so we'll see what Mythos Gamera are going to play. Again, it could just be trying to get their... Uh, it could just be trying to play into Turgut's comfort zone, because obviously Turgut, being your flex player, not being your main tank player, can throw you out for a loop here. So we'll see if they're able to recover in that sort of factor here on Hollywood. We'll have to see if UTOW Academy Blues are going to keep up this momentum, Geo. Again, it's not easy to have an error KDR, especially in the grand finals of the series to a team that you have not won against in the regular season only have won against once in the mid-season tournament so there definitely is the potential here for utow academy blues to have this momentum on their side the question yep. is can they keep it at full blast yeah that's the question right you know what there's worse things in life than being a playoffs team because it means at least if you make it to playoffs you've got a big chance right so fair play looks like on the defense they're going to lean to the spam um is wait they're actually they've left no okay right there we go okay that makes more sense i was <laughs> they got me there we're actually seeing life weaver come out which again is a spam character you don't see a lot it does mean however that the likes of dg astri or zeus can be a little bit more aggressive on an angle and then get pulled out you have that safety factor uh this is not a regular composition so if mephos get um tripped up by this then it's well played by Academy, but they're playing a very standard dive without a tracer, however. Lower going to be spamming in from the back on the Sojourn. The issue is if you dive on a Life Weaver and the, the pedal doesn't work out for them, they're stuck in the water, so they can they can become a very big dive target. Yeah, but Mythos Gamera running this dive want to do exactly that. They want to try to separate this Life Weaver of Spicy Toast from the rest of the team here. Already so much space given up here by University of Toronto as Mythos Gamera is just taking every single space that they can here, trying to force them away from the objective. But now the dive's coming in. You see the Winston of Turgut there trying to go into the cafe. But so far, it's been hard to try and scope out the target. They set their target onto the Sojourn, but already the Zeus turret gets rid of water on the Echo. So now Mythos Gamera are down a majority part of their DPS. And it's probably going to be not long that Lore, until Laura is dead as well here. Or not Laura, that was DJ Astray. Excuse me. Nonetheless, Mythos Gamera do get the kill on the Zeus here and are cleanly set up in this cafe. And now with no supports left for UTOW, it's going to be, or at least only the Kiriko for UTOW is going to be difficult. This has been a long fight, been a long day. But nonetheless, Mythos Gamera are taking the fight win. Well, I'll tell you who doesn't want it to be a long day. That's Mythos Gamera. They wanted to make a short day here on the point. Uh, getting that, that Katsuri Rush in time is a brilliant um, situation. Trixky really set their team up for success there by being able to build that in time. 
They were kind of dead in the water a little bit there, looking for good positions, but ultimately you already see Academy Blue swapping off, going for more of a little bit of a, like an, an anti-dive counter-dive of the Diva now and the Lucio as well for those kind of counter boops. Yeah, definitely. That Diva is gonna make a gonna make it a hassle, not just for Turgid, but also for Water on this Echo, who yes, is 90% to that duplicate, but still is gonna have a lot more pressure considering that there is now a definitive hit scan on the enemy team. Turgid diving into the back line, does pop the Primal Rage. Mm. Meanwhile, Spicy Toast is killed out by the Sticky Bombs here as Kirsten is just looking to stop all this pressure, but so far it's been very difficult. They have to constantly try to focus on multiple different aspects. They finally decide to focus down water. Meanwhile, the rest of the team is kind of dying behind them. Now they don't have any supports left. They will be able to get the kill onto both supports for the side of Missile Gamera, but still that card is a moving. Yeah, this has been a back and forth kind of blood fest, but that is going to work out for the defending team that have just a little bit more stability and having the D.Va and being able to eat up that damage and stay alive longer. However, if you get caught out now with that beam, that would be bad. Backs up. Now they're going to go in with a Cloa classic off tank main tank dive. Yep, here we go. We're back to Overwatch 1 with the Winston Diva dive here. The only thing you're missing is a Tracer at this point. Katsuna Rush has popped here from Nalia to try and stop the pressure coming out here from Mythos Gamera as Water currently trying to fend for their life here on this Echo is, however, going to get burned down once again by Zeus' <laughs> turret. If I had a nickel for every time that turret found a kill onto an Echo, I'd have two nickels, which isn't a lot, but it's very weird it happened twice. Well, yeah, and uh, that, that just means that Zeus is placing them on angles that are really affecting the lanes of attack that Water wants to take, and that just goes to show that this isn't just a Hail Mary pick, it's a practice choice of going Torbjorn, and we've seen it work very well already. They have pretty much all of their ultimates other than Rush ready. Now you know that Trisky's gonna have built another, Trisky's been building them up a lot, so you're going to want to probably get prepared and just kind of back up from it. You don't want to beat into it, you don't use Sound Barrier, you want to be able to just move your team away from the position. Mythos Gamera trying to make sure that they have less distance in between Ooh. them and the enemy. Overclock comes out from Lore, but they're booped off the high ground <gasps> and straight into a self-destructing diva of Cursed. And what a play from Spicy Toast to set up that engage. But Mythos Gamera are not done yet. The Kitsune Rush, the Beat, and the Primal Rage all pop in tandem. You might as well add the Kitchen Sink onto that. But Turgid is throwing every single sink into the firm of DJ Astray. But Nali is keeping them alive. And Mythos Gamera investing three ultimates. And so far, they have yet to find a single elimination in this fight fight, but now Kirsten's out of the mech. Can Mythos Gamera have an opportunity to engage on this and try to gain the advantage for their own, but they've lost Trisky in the midst of it all. Kirsten may be dead, but the rest of Mythos Gamera are falling by the wayside. Uh, target was working overtime there. It just wasn't enough, and that is horrid for Mythos. They are swapping some of their uh, heroes here, going to the D.Va already, to try and justify that devastating fight where you don't win with utilizing all those ultimates. You're pushing into Kitsune Rush. Also, you're pushing into an Overclock. No support else to deal with it. This is going to be a very tough couple of fights for Mythos. We're probably looking at them capping in overtime, if anything. We'll have to see Mythos are able to get themselves rekindled here. Still have no ultimates on the board as well, which is going to be even more difficult. The closest they have is that duplicate from water as they start pushing in here. Target on the Diva pushing in, but there's going to be that Molten Core from Zeus trying to keep everybody at bay. And the Katsune Rush as well, built up from Nalia yet again trying to turn the tide. The duplicate does come out, but it's onto the Kiriko here for water. And they're just shooting all those Kunai into a defense matrix courtesy of Curse in here. It's not looking good here for the side of Mythos Gamera. Still trying to find their footing. They do get that Katsune Rush off from water, but the rest of their team is starting to die. Fungin caught off in the wrong corner. That is two for two on, on people getting caught off in the wrong corner when Kirsten has a diva bomb, and that just means the cleanup here for this diva for the side of the University of Toronto. Yeah, but you are seeing Target want to go in still, but the team's not there for it. You're going to get staggered out here. Something horrendous. This is tough. You've got one last fight. You have built a little bit more ult, especially towards your support, which is good. Um, still got the overclock though, and the sound barrier from Spicy Toast. This is a very defensible position for Academy Blues. What they have to be careful of is where Trisk is going to lay down this column of pain with this Kitsune Rush. That Kitsune Rush is going to be the win condition here for Mythos Chimera. 
They will be able to get the touch onto the card here. Water switching over to the Tracer and getting rid of that turret from Zeus. Thankfully, won't be dying into it this time as the Katsuna Rush is on the high ground here from Trisky to try and set up a perfect engage. DJ Ashtray also looking for the back line, but Zeus is already removed here by Water. Trisky trying to just keep up target here so that he can get that Diva Bomb offline. The beat, however, is here from Fungin. Deadeye used here from Lore to try and open up the field as the beat is used by Spicy Toast. Not enough to keep them alive, though, as they're shot in the head by that Deadeye. Overclock now used here from DJ Ashtray. Trey, trying to turn it around, but they are forced out by Target here as Mythos Gamera continuing to move this card in overtime and pushing it toward into the studio. And Mythos Gamera can breathe for a moment. They were able to get into position brilliantly. They, they really baited a lot of that movement by getting them onto the low ground by you know, teasing the point and then they set up. That was a really fought out attack. Now they still have just a minute to complete this third point. So they can't breathe, like take a breather for too long. You've got the bomb, so target can go in a little deeper and take a little bit more risk. But other than the pulse bomb, you don't have too much. So utilize against what's going to be Nalia's upcoming Kitsune Rush. It's definitely going to be a challenge here for Mythos Gamera, but they do find an early kill here on the DJ Ashtray, courtesy of Fungin. Kirsten trying to dash away on their D.Va, but it's forced to hit that hinder. They do throw in the D.Va Bomb into the back line, but it won't find anything this time. Not three for three this time on those D.Va Bombs, but Zeus says get rid of Lore in the aftermath. Target Force uses the D.Va Bomb to get the remake off. We'll be able to get that successful remake here, but now Mythos Gamera still pushing this card, but have nothing to really stabilize for this next fight. Yeah, and especially if water's gone, it's a big risk now, and if you want to commit to this, you're taking it as your final fight, which they are, they're not backing up. Yep, they're using the Katsune Rush actually from Trisky as the Molten Core and Katsune Rush come out from the University of Toronto trying to seal the deal here. Zeus pushing in with that overload and getting rid of Fungin in the middle of it with that lava pool. Mythos Gamera falling one by one. Water's Pulse Bomb will be able to get rid of Zeus, but it's all for naught as the rest of their team is yeah. dead. Water has to try to stall this out for as long as possible, but it's going to die to the Lucio boop from Spicy Toast, courtesy of help from the turret from Zeus that time as the cart will stop right at the end of Hollywood here for the side of Mythos Gamera. I feel like it's a tough decision to make in the moment of battle, but with 20 seconds remaining and you losing your Tracer in that instance, Tracer's going to get back fast. You have enough time to back up a bit, give some space so that you can come back in. And while you're spamming, Fungin can have a better chance of building Sound Barrier, which they were very close to getting by the point of the end of the map there. So... I, I think they might look back on that and realize that they had that opportunity, but again, in the heat of battle, it's harder to identify that. So now, Mythos Gamera, we're able to get the cart pretty far, but we'll have to see if they're going to be able to hold it here on their defense. And obviously, it seems like they want to stick with this D.Va, Geo, which I don't blame them. Target on that D.Va did look pretty comfortable against the, against the University of Toronto. Yeah. Uh, Target was actually really comfortable here. Kind of came into their own in a way after you know having a tough time on the rematchra. So perhaps a dive leaning tank player, anyway. Um, e even on the Winston did very well, especially with the primal rage that just didn't work out that one time. Of course, Laura now going to be looking to you know kind of follow up, get their team to follow up on their damage. You know, throw in those dynamites, play from a long angle. And with Academy Blues playing the D.Va, uh, they're not in as much danger than if it was a Winston dive because D.Va just moves naturally slower than a Winston. But it's, you know, them slowly getting into position and then DG Astray following up on if you get dinked by one of those molten iron bolts that's going to be coming out from Zeus. So now Mythos Camara trying to hold on multiple different high grounds. You see all the members back there in the cafe. DJ Ashtray notices that and is trying to look for an attempt to dive. Zeus is just going to be taking the wide angle here on this Torbjorn, pushing all the way up into the back line, looking to get their 14th elimination of the game as they pepper the damage into Fungin's barrier. They will get the kill onto that Brigida, but will risk their life for it as Trisky does get the trade. And Mythos Camara seems to have a good way of dealing with this dive. Nonetheless, the University of Toronto is still pushing forward. Trisky is now removed. There's no supports left, and all of a sudden, Mythos Gamera's plan is falling to waste. Yeah, that, that was almost like a kind of diving Torbjorn and basically created a father-daughter meetup in their respective spawns. Um, you don't... It's not quite 
normal, uh, but it's worked for them, and Zeus is such a peculiar Torbjorn player where they're able to get into those annoying angles and be behind your backline uh, as the Diva pushes into your front and pincer you. That's the sort of play that's going to win them out here. Now, Nyla is coming up to this rush yet again. She is so good at building these quickly. And definitely the continue rush. The continue rushes have been very fast building here for both teams. Meanwhile, however, Zeus is continuing to find shot after shot here with the Torbjorn, and they found the kill onto Laura before the fight even begins here. So Mythos Gamera down their main DPS prospect here. They need to wait for that Ash to come back into the fray while they try to hold this cart in the streets of Hollywood. Laura just spamming down onto them as well, trying to build Bob so they can get that off angle target, touching the point. They're very slowly just pushing, keeping these little, little small cubby roofs above them so they don't take as much spam. And this card has barely been contested throughout the entirety of this streets phase. Now it finally is by target, but still the members of University of Toronto trying to dive up to this high ground to take it away from Mythos Gamera. Water looking to try to flank in the back line, but is met by the turret. As meanwhile, some kills are going on the other side. Fungin and Nyla both picked out here, so the continue rush is now off the table here for the University of Toronto. But it might not even matter, because Mythos Gamera have both of their supports removed from the equation. Kirsten uses their diva bomb to get a remix. So does Turgid, who's stuck within the Whiskey Jack saloon, trying to keep themselves alive. They do get the kill on the Zeus, but they lose their mech in the process. DJ Ashtray now has a Dragon Blade, slicing and dicing everything inside. Turgid is forced to fall. Now they're trying to slice anything else in sight. They see water on that Torbjorn, but are booped away by Fungin here, as still Mythos Gamera trying to hold this cart for their own, but it's looking rougher and rougher as the University of Toronto still have the sustain. Yeah, this has been so good, pushing the point the whole time as well, so it's right up against the door. Kitsune Rush coming through, and you still have your sound barrier to stay alive. Oh, but the sound barrier is removed, courtesy of Laura's Bob. Spicy Toast removed from the equation. Water also gets rid of Zeus here, and a late Katsune Rush here from Trisky is going to cement the victory here for Mythos Gamera to keep them in control of this cart. Yeah, that was a good utilization of the ultimates there uh, from Water and Trisky. Um, also, did utilize the Bob. Now, actually, going over. This is incredible. Whoa, 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 whoa! No! Oh, no! <laughs> Not meant to do it that long, but uh, Trisky will get back in time. Um, yeah, there has to be a moment where you have to decide, okay, now is the go button for the kill, but Mythos Gamera <laughs> being a little bit too, little bit too confident that they would be able to get that D.Va before their Kiriko died. Might cost them a little bit in the end. Trisky, however, might be back in the fight before the diva of Kirsten is. Turkey going to be diving over to the opposing high ground here, trying to force out the members of the University of Toronto as the Molten Cork and the Beat come out from Toronto to try and push forward into this fight. Beat now initiated from Fungin to keep the rest of their team alive as now University of Toronto back on this cart, but have nothing really to show for it. So far, it's just been a back and forth affair, but Zeus will be the first one to get the first kill. Getting two in this fight as oh, well. Zeus. Zeus on this Torbjorn, making a name for themselves so far in the series. Make it three for Zeus. They'll get their life taken away from them by Turrigan, who now has to use the Diva Bomb here to keep themselves alive, but will die in the hands to DJ Ashtray, and the cart will now sail into the studios for the side of the University of Toronto. The bomb coming out here from Kirsten to try and stop Mythos Gamera getting out, and they actually do get out with four members in tow. DJ Ashtray's turret, DJ Ashtray gets killed out by the turret from water, and Mythos Gamera stopped that cart barely before the point. Uh, yeah, I, I, under, I understand the, the, the creative decision there, which it was a creative decision to use the bomb there. However, it, it's the Tracer who's able to touch in time, keep alive, and then, you know, get back onto the point as well of the rest of the team. Now you don't have that bomb. You, you now have Zeus here on the Farah, who is going to struggle without, like, a a, a pocket and a mercy with against this tracer who's just going to be constantly keeping that DPS passive alive on you. So it seems to be very careful about where they're particularly positioning themselves. Now we'll see how this far is going to make a difference here. It might not make much of a difference as Nyla is removed from the fight immediately here by Lore on this tracer. So Mythos Gamera already having a good advantage in their pocket. They do lose Lore, however, for their efforts, but still the damage has been done. You only have the Lucio heals here from Spicy Toast, and now with Zeus out of the picture, you kind of have to back up and prepare for the next fight if you're Toronto. You, you do, and I, I don't know why you're still in this one. You lose your 
you're Kiriko, you go, you, you leave, you know, you don't stay in this one. Look at these staggers, this is awful, you're below one minute, this is happening to you. Now you're in a very tough spot, you do have your blade for the next fight, but you have to be aware that both Fungin and Trix Trixie are ready with their respective spur ults against it. So at best, you know, it's going to pull out those ultimates. On the other hand, if you can wait to build your rush, then you can get a little bit more out um, output damage with said blade. We'll see what the move is going to be here from the University of Toronto as they start making their move in. Kirsten going all the way in the back line, forcing out a, oh, a different oh. angle and getting rid of water with the help of Nyla. Now here comes that blade from DJ Ashray, forcing out the beat here from Fungin as the Katsuna rush from Nyla is used in tandem. But the picks are starting to go back and forth once again. University of Toronto trying to find their footing in this fight as now the bomb comes out from Target trying to get their remake online. The card's still stalled out here. Target is able to get that remake and water now coming out here with that Molten Core trying to stop the cart in its tracks. Kirsten has the Diva Bomb. The beat is also used for Spicy Toast to keep everybody alive, but Mythos Gamera are still stalling this card. Pulse Bomb from Lore does get rid of Nyla as it's stuck onto the Diva of Kirsten, but still Mythos Gamera looking worse for wear. All the health bars dropping below half as they try to keep this card stalled out. Kirsten is removed out of a Diva Mech, but it's still a 4v1 right now. The turret from Water just sitting there in the main choke trying to stop the card, but it's going to do nothing of that sort as now the University of Toronto enter into the studios. Deja vu. Honestly, my heart broke for Spicy Toast. Going down to a turret when you're Lucio of Sound Barrier, uh, that must have felt so devastating, but the rest of the team did a very good job at staying alive long enough for Spicy Toast to come back into it. Uh, so Water again, just like Zeus, both these Torbjorns positioning their turrets in such a position that they are actually <laughs> dealing a lot of um, damage uh, to these uh, targets that are looking for these extra space. Then we have a dual Zarya here, which is all about now building up that charge thing alive again, that extra damage. We are still below a minute, folks. Yep, it's going to be difficult here for University of Toronto, but hopefully they can make this Zarya swap where if it is DJ Ashray goes into the back line. I believe that's the second blade that they built up in the past couple minutes. They don't find Ooh. anything with it except the damage to get rid of Fungin here, but they do sacrifice their life for it as Mythos Camara with only one support in the name, have to try and keep themselves alive with just Trisky in their back pocket, but Lore is removed from the equation by Zeus, and they have to touch the card before Zeus. it sails onto that golden box of victory, but Zeus is still popping up in the kill feed on this Torbjorn, doing this fight looking for a third but curse is going to take it away and the cart will sail into the golden box of victory bringing university of toronto up two to zero in this series yeah sometimes it's so quick you, you, my eyes don't even register it and yeah that blade from gg astray having that at the last final uh, hurdle definitely helped well it didn't get the eliminations it got the it got the the pressure i gotta say though zeus is very quickly become one of my favorite uh torbjorn players maybe even just players as a whole because the way they played Torbjorn there, sure, Waters did also get a lot of value from it. It still it, it goes to show that, you know, even these kind of niche picks like Torbjorn, it suddenly, you know, they, they, come, they become very deadly. And the way that Academy Blue are playing, they're playing like the truth. And the truth is this. This team is a, a collegiate team. A lot of these players are graduating this year. Which means that this could be their send-off. This could be their final hurdle. They're playing like it. They're playing like they're hungry. They're playing to have an end cap to their time as a team, as a champion, a CGL champion, to call themselves that. And they've they've come out of the, the gate swinging. Yeah, definitely. They are definitely hungry to cap off their college career with a championship here in the console gaming league season 13 north american grand master division we're going to jump it over to a quick break and when we return map number three is on the docket we'll see if university of toronto are bringing us to match point or if mythos griffins have anything to answer back don't go anywhere
But the stat sheet here for that last map tells the story in all of its glory here between the University of Toronto and Mythos Gamera. Kirsten being the biggest standout, 42-5 and five compared to their adversary, 30-10 and 10 here, Geo. It's not looking good if you're a fan of Mythos Gamera as the University of Toronto are back in that midseason form. I mean, this is a tough situation you're in where you have one of your uh, flex substitutes in on tank where obviously you'd rather have your main tank player in, which would be Dizzy. And uh, Christian's just showing that, you know, the difference between someone who's a flex player and someone who is who, who is a tank player. Uh, Christian is their tank. So, yeah, this is a tough position for Target to be in, but perhaps now it's time for Mythos to try and maybe go off book, maybe try a little, something that's a little bit more comfortable for Target, who's, you know, come in last minute to fill this role. So we'll have to see if it's going to play into their comfort picks here, as you mentioned, with our next map, which is New Junk City. A very interesting map choice, especially considering what you know about the team of University of Toronto here, Geo. Yeah, Academy Blue told me a few things. One of them was that they're a Brawl favorite team. The next thing was Ram slash Junker Queen. Now... Junker Queen hasn't been seen a whole lot recently, but Junker Queen has historically been the composition that you lean towards in New Junk City. So we might just see that Junker Queen come out. Again, you could still see Ram instead, but either way, this is a risky play here because this is definitely something that leans into the strength of Academy Blues in a situation where, again, you don't have like your full uh, starting rosters. Uh, th this feels like we're either going to have something creative up our sleeve or we haven't done enough research on what Academy Blues are particularly looking for. I know you only have a choice of two maps for this game mode, but still, I think New Junk City is the one that maybe leans in the favor of Academy Blues a little bit more. Yeah, definitely. There is that potential here to see that sort of brawl style or the Junker Queen style here from the side of University of Toronto Academy Blues, which they've looked strong on this entire season. And when it hasn't been the brawl, it's been, of course, that diva for the side of University of Toronto. So there definitely is the potential here, Gio, that we could very well see uh, University of Toronto continue this dominance. But we did get some breaking news here, Gio. We are currently delaying the start of the map because Mythos Gamera are trying to get dizzy in as we speak mm -hmm. so if dizzy comes in this entire script could be flipped on its head that is true but the issue is how much time they have left in their allocated um buffer time before the 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 issue arises which is very few i'm being told under five minutes so that that's where things get tough and get close to the wire yeah if we get dizzy, then suddenly, you know, Mythos Gaming can actually... Sorry, Mythos uh, Gamera, not Mythos Gaming, uh, can show us um, a little bit more of who they are and what they have done. You know, with the full roster, they have beaten Academy Blues prior to this. So if they can get dizzy, perfect. But the issue is they can't wait too long or then the question comes. I think in the rules, it's a forfeit and you cannot do that. That would take you to match point and that's suddenly even worse than this situation. So yeah. uh, if they get dizzy, perfect. Uh, if they don't, then I think they need to be a little bit more creative to kind of buffer the fact that they don't have their main tank. Yeah, definitely. They still have Turgot, obviously, in the lineup, but if they can get dizzy, that is your fifth. That is technically your fifth starting player. You are going to have that advantage at the end of the day. So worst comes to worst, you're going to have to play with Turgot. You're going to have to find a way to win on New Junk City if you can't. Then you're out against match point, and you yeah. have to initiate a reverse sweep up against the University of Toronto to secure the championship for your own here. Still a possibility. It's up on the table. I've seen the players on. I've seen some of the players on Mythos Camara come back through more stressful situations, but still, you do not want to be backed into a corner that early into the series and finally just have your main tank come in for the first map of the series. So yeah. we'll have to see if the Mythos Camara team is going to be able to get themselves stabilized here, even if their main tank is not in the match within the next two minutes. You know, what I will say is if they are able to get Dizzy in, then what I said about New Junk City being Academy Blue's favorite, that that doesn't necessarily flip on its head, but it, be it becomes less relevant. It becomes more equal because uh, Dizzy is a uh, very good tank when it comes to brawl compositions and is a very good leader for their team. 
but uh, you know that's just kind of speculation at the moment as they try to get dizzy and uh, I'm not exactly sure what the issue particularly is but the issue right now for the team is very clear they're 2-0 down in the first of four grand finals of this division and it's it's looking rough for them it's it's time to head back whether or not you have dizzy yeah, definitely. You have to really put yourself in the position here to try and win this. Could be also, the delay for Dizzy could be because they are listed as v from Vietnamese nationality on the, on the roster sheets that we have here. So that's probably is one of the main reasons. But again, you mentioned that Brawl style. Dizzy's most played hero is Reinhardt. I don't think I need to explain how that is a good thing if you are <laughs> a member of Mythos Camara. So if you are going to be able to get Dizzy in here... Then you have the potential to win in a brawl composition because you have a tank that's going to be coming in that's yep. very suitable on those brawl compositions and definitely can try to bring you into the favored position. Absolutely. Uh, you know, Reinhardt, we've seen Reinhardt, uh, I think Joker mentioned it as well, sneak a little bit into the meta. Suddenly, Reinhardt, playable. Whoa, what's happened there? Uh, Maybe even, you know, after the mid-season as well, which uh, must be coming up soon. I've not really been tracking it, but surely we're getting close to that. But nonetheless, a Reinhardt player can get a lot done um, when it when you're looking against the likes of Ramacha, though, it's about playing for the charge. Uh, but unfortunately, we've hit the time limit. Dizzy is yeah. not in this matchup. They've not been able to get them in in time. Again, it's an unfortunate situation, but the game's the game. We've got to push forward and... Now it's time for them to decide, are we going to play what we would play with the tank that we haven't practiced it with, or are we just going to feel the moment, feel the energy, and switch it up? That, that's the main thing here for Mythos. Uh, it's going to be on either if you want to stick with the script or go on the comfort picks here. So we'll see if that is going to be the plan from Mythos Gamera as we load in to New Junk City. Again, University of Toronto, one map away from securing a match point in the series. Two maps away from taking the title. Mythos Gamera need to start hitting that accelerator fast. And based on what we're seeing here, Gio, it looks like they want to stick with the script. Well, yes, but if Water is staying on Venture, that is a... It's gone. I wanted to be so <laughs> happy about that to see them in, but oh well. Again, Junkrat also has a similar thing where it's like you don't expect to come up against a junk in situations where you know you don't usually you new know, junk new junk city i have actually seen more yeah venture's back uh venture's really good at dealing with squishy targets so the like of zeus is gonna have to be a lot more careful in handling water when they can get burst down and pushed about on the other side of things academy blues they're on the junk queen we've talked about this this is a comp that they're very comfortable with We'll see if this Junker Queen comp is going to work in favor of the University of Toronto as they already start making the putting the pressure on. But already the pressure is coming Ooh. right back to them as Turgut in the Nemesis form gets rid of that Junker Queen. And now the University of Toronto are down their main tank, but they still are able to equalize getting two kills onto Water and Trisky. So Mythos Gamera having that good advantage, but taking a little bit too much for granted here. They are going to try to get this point first here for the cap as they're trying to cap it there with Fungit and Target currently holding down the perimeter. University of Toronto, however, with this damage and with this pressure, they can just push right on in and take that objective for their own. That's the thing about this composition. Even if you lose your tank, everyone is a very mobile player, a mobile uh, hero. And suddenly, you know, you can't get the follow-up that you want. You're taking a lot of spam damage from both a Tracer and a Genji together, and it doesn't quite work out. Unfortunately for Gamera, they didn't even get any percentage for their efforts, and they're going to be pushing in where Nyla, again, is ahead of the game in terms of getting their ultimate, even before Coalescence from Trixky. Nyla might as well just be a fox in their own right right now. Just how fast they're building up these Kasune rushes. Laura, meanwhile, is chopped meat. Chopped down by Carnage and then chopped down, killed out by Spicy Toes. Meanwhile, the chopper is here. Zeus pulling out the blade. Does get rid of Target, but will die for their efforts. But the damage has been done. Well, yeah, that was done again. It just again reminder that like you know, venture is good against the Genji in those situations, but Zeus again applied enough pressure. Uh, ultimately, you have to be careful where you're putting Loror because they are going to be someone that gets really pushed out here, especially if they notice that the um, uh, movement ability has been used. Uh, Academy Blues are completely unaware, so they're being outflanked right now. But right now, Mephos Gamera, they need to be playing on the point. 
objective. They need to stay on this objective. They need to try to cap it for their own. The consistent rush from Nyla is going to try to stop them from doing exactly that. But Spicy Toast is removed before they're able to pop the beat to keep themselves alive. But now, however, it is a trade. Lore is also removed from the fight. But still, the pressure is coming in. And the Rampage from Kirsten is counter is not getting a lot of value as well. Tristy's Coalesce is helping keep the field alive. And Mythos Chimera come out on top in this fight. Yeah, utilizing both their support out, so it's going to be a little bit disadvantageous against Spicy Toast, but you have those um, aggressive ultimates from your DPS, but most importantly, target and keep themselves alive with this uh, upcoming Annihilation. It won't last too long, because Academy Blues can move away from it very easily, but Academy Blues, they don't have as long because of how long that fight went out and the percentage that Gamera have to build these ultimates. They need to go in kind of quick here. Yeah, definitely. Gamera trying to push in quick, but it's going to be hard to do that when your Lucio is already removed. Being from Spicy Toast used to just continue this pressure as the Annihilation and the Tectonic Shock used here from the side of Mythos Gamera. Trying to find picks. They do find three, but the DJ Ashtray is able to get rid of water, and it's going to be Mythos Gamera spending everything in the bank to take the victory for their own and take the arena as a result. I mean, they, they spent big and they got the point, so fair play to them. Yeah, Fungin goes down early, which you can't afford, but it unlocked something primal within Gamera. And their players, the, you had to spend all their ultimates to do it, but they did get the point. Does mean that in this next fight, you're looking at Zeus, who has been getting these blades quickly. It's probably going to get the blade, probably going to be able to utilize it to control this point. So you're looking at Academy Blues probably getting this fight win, unless something happens that Gamera, you know, throws them a cubo. University of Toronto trying to take this wide angle to try and get to the back line of Mythos Gamera. The Shout comes in here to try and make the engage. Fungin is hit with a lot of damage, but is still alive and is able to get rid of Zeus in the aftermath as Kirsten not able to get that kill onto a crucial target and will fall for their efforts as Mythos Gamera clean up the field one by one and take the objective. I was about to say that it's maybe time to change, and yeah, they have. They put Kristen onto the Rematra. Rematra is a lot more stable. Uh, can get that block in, and well, yeah, you have that Queen Shout. It isn't as long-term consistent as a block is from Rematra. Now they're on this composition. They don't have a lot of ults to deal with, so they want to come in here, build their ultimates, try and pull something out of Gamera, who are likely to come up to this coalescence in this next fight, whether they need it or not. That Ramatra duel is going to be interesting to watch here. Target already dropping extremely low. Forced to go into permanent block phase. And Trisky pumps the oh. coalescence, but is killed up by Kirsten, who finds two in this fight before they're shot in the head by Lore. And that's enough value for the side of University of Toronto to get right back on this objective and take it for their own. Oh, what's a coalescence in the face of a clothesline? They were torn apart there. Kristen immediately reminding us what happened on the pile. Immediately reminding us what that situation was. Now they're in a good spot because they've also built ultimates off the back of that. There's going to be a heavy alt fight here, which means that the eyes, you have to keep your eyes on the sound barriers, but also if Nyla can build Coalescence, that could change things. Unless either Sojourn of the teams able to find an elimination like that. And you just, you just said it right there. You were setting it up perfectly. DJ Ashtray back on the Sojourn and back in the kill feed, finding that crucial kill on the Trisky here. And now that sets up University of Toronto for one fight on this point. Yeah, exactly. They don't have that uh, second chance now. So what they need to do here is win this next fight or they lose this point. Both uh, the, the, the coalescence so is going to be ready from Academy. The University of Toronto trying to get hold back up against the pressure coming out from Mythos Gamera. The beat and the annihilation use here from Gamera, but they're starting to fall one by one. Trisky is again the first one dead, and Laura has to pop the overclock, trying to look for anything, but the rest of their team is nowhere in sight. They do get rid of Kirsten, but it's only them and Fungin. They have to try and make this work, but Fungin killed out by the turret as well as by the Moira of Nyla, and Laura just sliding onto the point, but they're only going to be able to contest it with their dead corpse as the junkyard goes to University. University of Toronto. And they did that while keeping a lot of their offensive ultimates. Now, they're not going to be able to stabilize with support ultimates, but neither are Gamera. Now, th this is where, you know, Water wants to be getting good tectonic shock placement here. Now, it's very easy to do that against now Academy Blues, who are a little bit a slower composition and they're pushing into a choke. This is the perfect time for Venture to get ultimate um, value. 
Yeah, and already DJ Ashtray popping that overclock as well. Gets punched out by Target, who finds two at the start. But the Molten Core from Zeus keeping everybody separated. Waters, Tectonic Shock, doesn't find anything. And somehow, even though they lost oh. the first two picks in the fight, University of Toronto come back with a vengeance. I'm telling you, I'm telling you, Bowser, there's something about this team. There's more in it for them. They just want it more right now. And and, and, and not downplaying Gomera when I say that. I'm really, they want it a lot as well. But Academy Blues are playing like their legacies depend on this matchup. And they're not going to have a whole lot in this next fight. They're depending on Nyla to get this goal essence, which they are speeding towards getting it. Devil's Gamera, however, are waiting for their own coalescence. It's currently a race between Nyla and Trisky, but DJ Ashtray is still removed. Fungin, however, is also gone from the equation, so the speed boost is gone for the side of Mythos Gamera, but Nyla is removed. Now that coalescence off the table here for the side of Toronto as Gamera used their own to just put the pressure onto the objective. So this will be able to get that late kill on the lore, but it's not going to be enough to save the fight as Gamera take the point. Nice show calling there from Gamera. The someone called that Nyla was in a tough spot. They applied pressure. Nyla was too low health when they got coalescence to want to risk using it and losing it. So they held on. They have another chance to do so. But now they're pushing into Lore, who's got the overclock. There's no match on the other side. So you're looking for spicy toast to either build the speed quickly or for the coalescence to be able to somehow keep them alive against an overclock. Nyla looking for this coalescence. We'll see if they're going to be able to use it to perfect per to perfection here as they initiate with it. Molten Core also used from Zeus here as Lore now pops the overclock. The Annihilation also pop from Target, mostly to keep them alive, but it's not going to be Whoa. enough to do exactly that. DJ Ashtray gets them killed out. Spicy Toast also pops the beat here, so Toronto investing everything into this fight. And so far, it's been going pretty well. Pungin is now removed from the fight, but Water gets rid of Zeus. Lore gets rid of Ashtray. It's a back and forth, but Pharaoh all of a sudden, and Mythos Gamera trying to eat equalize in this fight the dps moira of trisky just trying to stall at the point will eventually die for their efforts and now gamera need to touch this point to try and get another contest and they are on the professor they're going to do that they still have lore set up somewhere and if if they get their venture of water in it and tectonic shock it suddenly turns around and you also could get that kill on Nyla, though. Beautiful pick from Laura to get rid of the Moira. Now the Lucio is your only heals. Fungin's beat also unleashed onto the field. It won't keep Target up, but try to keep the rest of the team alive for now. Water unleashes the Tectonic Shock. Looking for anything but that barricade from Kirsten. Keeping them alive and keeping the rest of the team protected away from that Venture Ultimate. Annihilation now used from Kirsten. Trying to keep them alive. And while they will die for their efforts, the point goes over to University of Toronto. And they're now at Flashpoint Map Point. Perfect storm for DG Astri. Oh, they need to touch the point. Let me step back and just aim train. Uh, let me just essentially aim train because you can't contest them. Because if you ever send your Doomfist or your Lucio and Lucio's a risk, you send your Doomfist and you might lose the point. They put them in a no win situation there. Academy Blues uh, understanding of the, the, the larger game has been on point since the very beginning. They are absolutely on form and they're pushing into this one with DJ Astray, who's been a star player with that overclock ready. It's gonna be hard for Trisky to keep them alive with only a coalescence. We'll see if DJ Ashtray is going to be able to spit those hot beats to start off, but Lore is going to be the one spitting the beats first, getting rid of Nyla before the fight even begins. Lore popping up in the kill <laughs> feed. Three <laughs> kills for Lore. That's the Lore I know well. Yeah, uh, Laura looking like Lore Soldier. Uh, incredible. You know, you, you big up the ults that could win the fight, right? The the ever present truth is that if you eliminate someone naturally, then you're going to have the advantage. That happens there. Perfect. And then the follow up of the coalescence, they were a little quicker to the trigger than Academy Blues, who were very slow, already 50% control for Mythos. So Academy Blues are looking to take control in this next fight with. You know, they've, they've pretty much got all their ultimates apart from Annihilation. Multicore is going to be the initiator. DJ Ashtray also popping the overclock. Spicy Toast used the beat to counteract Laura's beat. And already the kills start to glow blue. Trisky and Target both removed from the equation early here as DJ Ashtray's overclock just providing the pressure to continue the push here for Toronto and take this point back. Yep, yeah, and they did it for ages and coalescence. So now they're in a bit of a nice rotation where this fight, they're going to look to coalesce, push forward. Kristen will be able to build Annihilation off the back of that survivability. And Academy Blues are looking good. On the other hand, though, that Annihilation already set for target. They can push in, utilize that for Fungin to build Sound Barrier or for Water to build their own multiple. 
Colossus comes out from Nyla. Target answers back with that Annihilation. Just trying to burn down the field, but it's getting burned down themselves. Kirsten punches them out with that Nemesis form. And Trisky is bested by their Moira adversary as University of Toronto perfectly used the ultimates that they had. Yeah, perfect. Now you have your Annihilation and you, you don't have a lot off the back of that, so you're probably looking to go a little bit harder here. You have to be aware that Water is going to lay down a carpet of pain, so you don't want them to be in a position where they're forcing you to walk to them and you to walk over that Molten Core. Academy Blues, they want to take the initiative here. Last fight on Bomb Flats. University of Toronto trying to take this advantage. Memphis Camaro are going to be touching onto the objective with that Molten Core from Water. Trying to keep them separated, and Zeus caught off on an odd Ooh. angle. What an op what an opportunity opening from Torgut to find that one straight Torbjorn in the middle of the University of Toronto. Now they're down there, Torbjorn, trying to look for the advantage of the Annihilation. Comes in from Kirsten, the beat from Fungin. Not there to keep Lore up in time, but still, the opportunity is there for Camara as they force Kirsten back. The, that Annihilation just barely able to keep them alive as Nihil is pumping every single bit of healing into this Ramatra. Torgut trying to find the advantage, but so far has been able to find nothing. Meanwhile, though, Coalescence from Trisky is used as well. Trying to burn down the field. This Fungin is shot out by the by the, by the overclock from DJ Ashtray, who sacrifices their life for it. It's a back and forth affair, but it's University of Toronto stepping up to the plate when it matters the most and fighting those late kills to secure the map and go to match point. Match point here in the grandest stage of them all. Wow, this is looking so close in a lot of ways, but ultimately Academy Blues have just a better understanding of a lot of these like larger fights you know they did put themselves into a tough position when they let that molten core get utilized to push them around the flank that was good utilization from water and then being able to find zeus on the off angle but how many times has a member of academy blues went down first and academy blues know exactly how to nullify the disadvantage in that fight they are so good at doing that it happens all the time the adaptation the ingenuity of this team is off the charts yeah, definitely. Academy Blues, Academy Blues are not one to panic when they've lost that first pick. They know exactly how to follow up with that first death, or at least to be able to know what to do after they've lost a member. And you can just tell from the stats of this roster here, Geo, but one stat that definitely stands out is the Lucio stat. Spicy Toast, on average, getting more damage, more eliminations, more final blows, and less deaths than their adversary. I think it's safe to say we know who the better Lucio is right now in this matchup. Uh, you know, I I had mentioned it earlier, I heard it in the wins that Spicy Toast has been a player that has been stepping up for the team in a lot of these games, but by golly gee, this just puts it into perspective. To have less than half the deaths and more than twice the eliminations, Spicy Toast is on their peak game right now. And all, all of the parts of this team are really working towards what could now potentially be, Bowsy, a clean sweep for the rest of this Grand Finals. That's a situation that's really rough to be in. But yeah. we have but a change-up. There is a change-up here for the side of Mythos Gaimera. They have a tank player coming in on the tank roll. The Gurgler is subbing in here for the tank roll. And this, basically, it's not as big as Dizzy, but you now have a dedicated tank player on that tank roll here, Geo. So the Gurgler coming in means now you have the sustainability of an actual tank player who knows how to tank, who probably knows how to shot call, and can try to lead this team to a reverse sweep potential. Yes, and it's just changed there, but also Target hasn't left the roster. Target's now went on to the DPS, which tells me Target's probably going to be playing that Tracer. So if I had to guess, we're likely looking at a Sojourn, Tracer, Doomfist, Lucio, uh, Kiriko dive, which you know would play into who Gargler likes to play. Gargler likes to play the Doomfist. So if we see that, then that can really change up the flow of the game suddenly we're not playing you know slow dives like diva or you know slower paced compositions that are brawly suddenly we have a doom fist to deal with this could be the last minute switch up that mythos camera needs because to win this grand finals bowsy it's a reverse sweep that they need to do and we're going to be starting that on a push map which you know can be you know very snowbally so they could they could make a statement here which is going to be on Coliseum. 
Coliseo is that map choice. So we'll see if these swaps from Mythos Chimera mm. are going to put them in the position to try and get a reverse sweep against the University of Toronto. Again, it's worth mentioning, Gio. The University of Toronto did beat Mythos Chimera in the midseason tournament, but in the last match of the regular season, it was Mythos Chimera getting a clean 3-0 sweep over the University of Toronto to get basically an almost undefeated season under their belts here. So if you're the University of Toronto, you have the opportunity to take this match for your own. But it's not going to be without a challenge as Mythos Chimera now have their full lineup ready in the wings and are trying to turn this script on its head. Yeah, and you know, I was talking about this Doomfist composition, and I'm thinking, okay, we come to Cole Col Coliseo. I wouldn't particularly have said the Coliseo was the Doomfist push map, personally. I'm not a Doomfist player, to be fair, so, you know, I, I could be wrong. But, you know, it's harder to play those flank angles because of uh, the legendary glass on that corridor uh, at the beginning of the map. Uh, this map, you're probably going to see Academy Blues stick to what they've been doing well, which is the Rematra, and maybe just hard force down main. The victory is within grasp of Academy Blues, and it looks like they're not taking any risks against it. In fact, Gamera are actually leaning towards Reinhardt instead of Doomfist. Suddenly, this looks like it could really take it to Academy Blues. If there's anything that the Gurgler might want to be hitting for, it is a brawl composition here. And Mythos Gamera wanted to try to run that against University of Toronto's brawl, which we've seen has had the upper hand in this series, Geo. So it's going to be the Reinhardt versus the Ramatra. Yeah, and of course, against the spam, Reinhardt has a disadvantage, but when you get into that brawl, you look for those charges, suddenly it changes, right? If you're up and close and dealing cleave, that Reinhardt's going to have the advantage. You see Mephus Gamera already positioning so that they can be up and close. Academy Blues keeping their distance. That's going to be the name of the game. Yep, Academy Blues trying to keep their distance. DJ Ashtray poking out from afar, trying to find those crucial picks. And you see Curse in there on the right side, trying to take the distance as well. Yeah. Zeus, meanwhile, is going to take all the distance they can now as they get rid of Trisky, the main support gone for the side of Mythos Gamera. And they are now in full retreat mode, either the hard way or the easy way. And again, the turret finding someone at the end of it. Uh, but yeah, Zeus again on this Torbjorn is proving that it's a keen pick that is throwing the team off. And Trisky being on the Baptiste is a is a classical choice. But again, you know, counter that towards you know playing the Moira. If you get stuck in a position, you don't really have a way out other than using your immortality field. So you want to be positioned safely already, so you can't get spammed out as easily as that. As Mythos Gamera now pushing back into this fight here with this Reinhardt again, taking that close space. They have the May as well from Target to try and wall off the members of the University of Toronto, which they've already done a lot of to Kirsten, who is forced to use that Nemesis form to keep themselves alive. Mythos Gamera now waiting for their next possible engage attempt here, close to that Amplification Matrix, but they don't have their speed moves. Fungin removed early here, and the Amplification Matrix now used with the Reinhardt and the Baptiste dead. Mythos Gamera falling by the wayside, and University of Toronto taking every bit of it for their own. Yeah, clown, cor clown cars tend to have a lot of clowns in them. Uh, clown corners, uh, seemingly the same. They were they were got stuck there because they got spammed out. They had to hide, but they were all hiding there. They get spammed out. That was a very inefficient you know, position to be in, but you were forced into it. Oh, <laughs> suddenly Zeus walks into the vortex and dies to it. Yep, Gurgler switching over to the Romatra now, trying to equalize against Kirsten, and they get that early kill to start off, and now Mythos Gamera have the advantage on their side with no DPS left side for the side of University of Toronto. Yeah, great positioning of the Vortex from Gurgler and being able to follow up now on the Romatra does mean that they'll be able to play from afar. That, uh, they weren't getting what they wanted with those wall charge combinations. Now Target is coming up to the May ult. It's going to be a heavy ult fight. It's about these supports to keep their team alive through it. As the multi-core comes out from Zeus, Overclock and Blizzard both used from Mythos Gamera. It's a beautiful Blizzard catching on to Kirsten. Target's dying wish is answered as they're able to get that kill. And the beat from Spicy Toast doesn't land onto the DPS. So Zeus is killed as well here by that nemesis form of Gurgler. The Mythos Gamera team continuing to stabilize and keep themselves alive as DJ Ashtray wow. goes for that sneaky kill. But will only get their life out of it. Yeah, Gurgler already looking so confident to be someone who's come in last minute to try and be the savior of this team. Suddenly they are looking confident and they did use a lot, but they still have this window to come up. They can control the, the lanes of that. Against the high noon, they're going to have to be very careful of where Ashtray is when this comes out so they don't get caught out by it. 
This is Gamera setting up for this attack attempt from the University of Toronto. It's a Gurgler already falling extremely low, but that's going to be a little bit rectified considering the Moira is removed from the side of University of Toronto and the uh, and the Annihilating Kirsten is out-annihilated by the Gurgler, pushing straight in the confidence of a Raging Bull! Yeah, and backed up by the brilliance of Trisky, who put that window down in a perfect spot to get the healing out, and also, Kristen, completely stuck. There was no way for them to get out, and now, suddenly, they could get their forward spawn off the back of this. I think Academy Blues can touch, but they don't have a lot of ults outside of the Molten Core to try and um, really... Blizzard and a beat. Lead change over. Mythos Griffin's gonna Mythos Gamera, excuse me. Are satisfied with it. They're gonna back up and give space away to University of Toronto. Now heading over to the main, knowing that now that you have the lead, you can install it as much as possible to try and gain that advantage for your own. As the University of Toronto try to make their way into the engage here with basically nothing to show for it. Or trying to look for that immortality field as the Torbjorn of Zeus looking for value as well. So far it seems to be a stagnant between these two teams that they're currently battling it out here in the main. No teams have lost any sort of picks. This is the, this is the essence of the Coliseo choke. Yeah, but I feel like you could have fought that to try and get that forward spawn, but here comes the initiation coming in with the coalescence, finding Kristen, so suddenly Mephos in the lead. Yeah, Mephos getting able to get the kill onto Kristen with that wall, and the Molten Core from Zeus is shut down by Lore. Nihilus coalescence, not going to be able to keep the rest of the team alive. Target will lose their life for it, but still the Mythos Gamera are in the advantage at the end of the day. They're trying to push forward here with the Gurgler, pushing forward on this Nemesis form, trying to find these late picks onto the Sojourn of DJ Ashtray and their adversaries, but still Mythos Gamera unable to get these final glows, and there is a perfect oh! shot from Lore, sealing an Ajax into Spicy Toast, the Amplification Matrix and the Overclock sealing the deal and sending Spicy Toast into Ajax territory. Oh man, that must have felt so rough, almost as bad as when the turret took them out. Spicy Toast, despite being so good, has had it so unlucky, but that was all down to the skill from Moror. And also, the fact that went so long is really testament of Zeus placing um, the ultimate down to keep it alive. See, Nyla trying to touch, keep it alive. This fight is still ongoing. They do not want this forward spawn unlocked. Gamera obviously want to keep that, want to get that point, but it's going to be difficult as they are sacrificing their life. DJ Ashtray finding two in the Nem in the annihilation, popped by the Gurbelgur. They're trying to keep themselves alive, and now Toronto have this bot back in their control. Incredible timing and control from Academy Blues to get the retouch and stop that forward spawn from being unlocked. Now they have an opportunity off the back of that. Nyla's going to have coalescence. Mephos, Gamera don't have a lot to answer for in the ultimate game. They need this neutral fight to go very much their way. We'll see if Memphis can be able to do that. University of Toronto trying to push that bot oh, to the golden, like, golden line, and Fungin's already removed from the fight. DJ Ashtray popping up when it matters the most. Coalesce has now popped here from Nyla. The Annihilation from Kirsten also uses. The Gurgler is burned down. Target is quick to follow, and the University of Toronto are looking in prime position to take this lead and take those checkpoints. I, I don't know what got Fungin onto the low ground, but as soon as that happened, the loser Lucio, that fight just swaps around, the forward spawn unlocked, and now Mephos Gamera need to push in against the team in the lead in both the game and the map against the team that has overclock against that long corridor. Zeus on the Reaper trying to flank, forced to back out here as here comes the Blizzard from Target and it lands onto three beautiful Great members, one. Spicy Toast, Zeus and Kirsten, all frozen to a crisp and killed into the ground as now the University of Toronto forced to give up this point and now with those forward spawns they will be able to get a closer hold but now they lose those checkpoint most likely. They, they felt it there, but that wall from Target was perfect to split the team up and allow the follow-up from the Blizzard. Academy Blues, of course, going to be able to meet them early on here. Same again with the overclock, but oh, Zeus, you've been caught out! Zeus going in for the oh! caught out, but it doesn't even matter! They kill it back with three kills! Two kills with the Death Blossom for Zeus! Found out on the flag! Doesn't even matter! They still pop off! The greatest trick the devil ever pulled was making you believe he didn't exist. It was Zeus's plan all along. The Blossom came out and again got a massive value. Shades of early in this uh, game. Two minutes remaining. Mephos Gamera need to get a lot done here. The Force Spawn unlocks and again. The, the smart play for Kennedy Blue to back up. They still have the overclock. They still have the sound barrier. But I think Gamera have the overall better economy right now to try and turn this around. 
And if those Camara have to play this perfectly here for the next 1 minute and 38 seconds. They use the Amplification Matrix in the main, trying to settle the deal as here comes the Overclock from Lore. Spicy Toe Sanchez back with the beat. Kirsten, however, dropped extremely low, getting hit by those Overclock bullets as they're trying to keep themselves alive. University of Toronto, now that that ult is expended, they now pop the Coalescence Dean to try to find the victory here. Annihilation pops here from the Gurgler as they rush into the back line, but are killed out for their efforts. They do get rid of Spicy Toast, however. University of Toronto need to try to find picks to get themselves in the advantage still. They only have one support to do it, but they still have the opportunity to win this fight. DJ Astray looking for the back line, but Kirsten is now removed. Astray needs to find the pick now, and they're unable to do it. They find Trixie, but it's one oh. second too late as the rest of their team is dead. We're under a minute. Everything matters. Lore pops off. Target doing well. They can follow up. Get this Lucio gone. They've stopped the sort of the forward spawn. They have a chance now. They've went on to Mauga. This is a massive risk, but it means the Gurgler might be able to stay alive a little bit longer. They have to be so careful. Annihilation ready from Kristen, but they're pushing into a May. No support ults right now. Fungin needs to build this beat very quickly. If I need to make this work, here comes the Blizzard from Target onto the high ground. It freezes up so, the Lucio of Spicy Toast as the Annihilation comes out from Kirsten. They do find Fungin, but they sacrifice their life for it. But now there's no support left for the side of Mythos Camaro. The only support is this Mago with the Cardiac Overdrive, but they don't have it online. Lore, however, has the Overclock. They get rid of Nyla. It's a back and forth affair, but now Zeus and Lore are the only two people left here. The bot does cap the checkpoint here for the side of Mythos Camaro as they're trying to push the bot forward, but the University of Toronto are back in this awesome. engagement with the Doofus and the Lucio coming in. The bot, however, is running away. Lore and Target are killed out of the act, and now Mythos Gamera need to try to find the advantage, but the Death Blossom is there from Zeus to keep them all off the cart. Trisky is removed. The Gurgler is the one that has to step up here in the Doofus, but they are out of the picture, and the University of Toronto give the best graduation gift they ever will get and will be your champions of the North American Grandmaster Tier. The final act for this team worked out beautifully. They showed their intelligence and their ingenuity. A perfect game from Academy Blues to send them off. What a brilliant story. What an amazing outcome for this team that has played together through so much. <sighs> the comeback as well after being beaten by Mephos Gamera to place themselves here. They've made themselves undeniable. Their names are etched into the history books of CGL and they can graduate with an even bigger smile on their face. 100% give this team a 4.0 GPA for their efforts in this matchup. A 4-0 scoreline, in fact. What a performance from the side of the University of Toronto Academy Blues. As you take a look at the stats here, GL, I mean, it writes itself. All of these players popping off whenever it mattered. It was much closer than the other maps, but still it came down to those crucial plays, and the University of Toronto just had enough of them. Yeah, the, the 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 smart strategic plays of you know backing out from the bot. We saw it from Mythos as well. But once Academy Blues were able to get themselves into a winning position, the way they played it made it so difficult for Mythos Gamera to get back into it. And one of the heroic plays though from Academy Blues was when Zeus got caught out. They didn't write it off. They pushed in. They pincered, and Zeus comes in with a beautiful blossom that turns that fight around. Absolutely heroic. And it just goes to show that every single cog in the mechanism of UTOW Academy Blues worked beautifully together to power them through the match. Uh, I just think this is such an incredible end to this team as they move on and graduate. And oh man, I'm just so happy for them. Yeah, definitely. What an absolute, what an absolutely great feeling it must be to be the University of Toronto, being able to take the championship for your own against a team that has been your rival throughout the entirety of this series. And while it was a valiant effort from the side of Mythos Gamera, they will have to fly high for another day. But still, an excellent performance here. And now our first champion has been crowned here of the day here, Geo. We're gonna jump it over to a quick break, and then we'll be back with the death segment for our. Or we'll be back. Are we going to an interview next or a desk segment? I assume the desk segment. Yep, we'll what be going over to the desk for an interview with one of the members from the University of Toronto. So don't go anywhere. The desk and an interview with the champions is coming up.
I see. The CGL <laughs> Grandmaster Tier Grand Final is history. And boy, do I feel like the CGL's bad patchy Mari now, as it was 4 0 in favor of the University of Toronto OW Academy team. Holy cow, we have spicy toast with us. And my word, my friend, what a performance. Certified CGL Ajax uh, Award winner as well there on Coliseo. Uh, spicy, how are you feeling after such a one sided victory? I'm feeling good. Um, I'm considered the CEO of Ajaxing on my team, so I'm always happy <laughs> to fulfill that obligation. All right, we're gonna have uh, some 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 random questions thrown at you by the members of the desk here. Uh, I'm gonna start out. Uh, well, Mythos Gamera did not have their main tank in Dizzy, and they were planning to playing with an arm behind their back. Did you guys just go about your business, or did that factor into your head anyway during this grand final? Uh, so we didn't realize that until, like, the third map that they weren't playing with their actual main tank. Uh, and we were just going about business as usual. Me, me, uh, teacher. Uh, I'll go. Um, <laughs> I, I want to take you back to, like, uh, the, the winning, the morning moment. What was going through your guys' heads um, when you guys got back to the car, or back to the bot on Coliseo, got those kills, and you knew you were champions? Uh, everyone was really excited. We're all yelling really loud, uh, calling targets and stuff. And yeah, I mean, it, it seemed very winnable that fight, especially since uh, we got some trades at the end. And so everyone was really excited. I, I am curious. Uh, is I know obviously you guys are a collegiate team. Are you guys all playing in the same room together? Uh, we are not. We're actually... Uh, our university does not have a gaming lab or anything like that, so... Uh, we're all playing from home. Okay, okay. Interesting. Um, so you guys have played this team quite a lot throughout the season. I believe you guys played each other week A and as well. You guys beat them in the mid-season tournament. Uh, given how much you guys have played, and I'm assuming scrim them as well, uh, how much of a difference do you think it would have made if they had Dizzy in there on the tank? Like, Do you think that would have been a lot closer series, or do you guys still think you 4-0? Uh, I, I do think it would have been a closer series. Um, however, uh, I guess... We wouldn't know because uh, this is just what happened today. All right, I got. Really one I got. Go ahead. Go ahead, Alex. All I was gonna say was like, you know, we put a, a stat line for you uh, on. I think it was New uh, New Junk City. They were comparing the two Lucias, and we saw you. You had like something thirty something plus Elims compared to like eight on the other side of the Lucio. Um, would you describe your Lucio gameplay as fairly aggressive? Uh I, I'm more of a, I go in when the tank goes in, I speed the tank in, and then I just run mm -hmm. on someone afterwards. And do you call that, or does the tank call that? Uh, a mix of both. Okay. Wow. Okay, uh, let's talk about uh, let's talk about Zeus uh, for a second, because uh, I did not have Torbjorn uh, on in my, uh, in my bingo card for a grand final, especially up at the GM tier. Why did you guys find that worked so well? Uh, I mean, I think it's more of a hero pool thing. Zeus, uh, he's a great player. He plays Genji, Torb, and Reaper. 
and uh, <laughs> venture now. All right, uh, all right. Well, go ahead. Um, I wanted to say, speaking of Zeus, continuing, I think well, I think it's safe to say that Zeus kind of really uh, gave your team the upper edge on Colosseo there with that massive death blossom. Um, I just wanted to, I just wanted to know if the words were PG. Uh, what was Zeus shouting after they they landed that 4K death blossom? Uh, I, I don't think we we're really shouting anything. Um, we're all like uh, cheering Zeus uh, with a very long uh, ooh sound. <laughs> <laughs> I can Zeus. hear it in my head now. Yeah, I can hear it. Yeah. Uh, and I know <laughs> many of your um, many of your teammates are graduating this uh, this upcoming semester. What um, what is the next for you guys? Probably still plan to compete even if they're not on the same team together? Uh, I I'm not exactly sure what the plan is from here on out. Um, I, I personally am graduating, so I will not be on the roster next year. Um, and I'm, I believe uh, two of our other players are also graduating. This is a pretty good, um, I guess, graduation gift, wouldn't you say? Yeah, this is a great way to end off uh, university. Ray, any, final, uh, any final thoughts? Um, no, I mean, just congratulations to you guys. That was incredible 4-0 victory. And uh, go ahead, Billy, take it away. Yeah, I mean, as an expat Canadian, uh, I'm extremely proud of all of you. I grew up in Laval, so uh, not too, not not close, but not terribly far away. But uh, yeah, super excited for you guys. Uh, any shout outs or thanks that you want to put out there? Spicy Toast, before we let you go and congratulate with your team. Uh, shout outs to Kirsten. Uh, She's the one who uh, manages our team, set up our scrims, does everything for us. All right, well, that is that for our NA Grand Master Tier Grand Final Spicy Toast here with the University of Toronto OW Academy team. They uh, have had an absolutely fantastic season. Actually, we saw them, uh, Ray, we saw them over in NECC as well. So it's nice to see them kind of close off the loop here uh, for what was a very good collegiate career for a lot of the players of Spicy Toes and for the University of Toronto. So uh, we will see you later. Thanks so much for joining us on the interview uh, segment here, Spicy Toast, and congrats once again. Thank you. All right, everybody, that was Spicy Toast with the University of Toronto OW. And well, I tell you what, this went a completely separate way uh, than most of us thought it was going to go. Now, Dizzy was not available uh, because of PC issues. They were trying to troubleshoot. They were trying to get him into map number three and map number four. It just didn't seem to come out there. Joker, I mean, as if we look at the four maps, I mean, Control kind of was uh, interesting, but I yeah. think that the hybrid map is really where the University of Toronto really separated themselves from Mythos Gamera. Uh, tell me what your thoughts are about what we saw and how it went down because yeah I mean control was pretty easy but I mean it was not you know a runaway yeah. by any means I agree with you I think those first two maps if say Dizzy was in we could be talking about the series right now because there was a lot of times when Mythos Gamero had the opportunity to win uh, fights win the we even win the map. We were we were talking about it on second point of the attack for Utah Utah Academy, right? Like they won it in overtime. Uh, in if something if things go differently in the in the, those a couple fights, right? We might be right now tied up uh, two two heading in, into a map number five, right? Mm -hmm. I think I think it's just. It's just an unfortunate thing that happen, right, when you're playing on uh, online instead of at LAN that um, you can't really um, overcome in in those those uh, situations, and it's unfortunate. Uh, I still really love uh, Utah's attack. I mean, what they were able to do, uh, what Nyla was able to do, how to, that they were able to keep their team alive so good, right? Um, it's, it's impressive. They, they, they kept, uh, Kirsten alive. They kept, uh, DJ Ashray alive, right? They, they just did, they did so much for their team. And that's, that's a, another big reason why they won. All right. Uh, Ray, now you and I talk a lot about, uh, setups. We talk about, about compositions. We talk a lot about, uh, positioning, you know, all the nuts and bolts. 
Uh, that's what we do as color casters. And I tell you what, watching Dizzy and Nyla get the team around, uh, and you heard Spicy Toes talking about it, um, going in with the tank, making sure that Kirsten was alive all the time. We saw Nyla do the same thing, only a lot differently. We'd watch when uh, Kirsten would go super low. We'd see Nyla Swift step in, get a Susan down, get the burst healing down, and then get the heck back out of Dodge, usually over to DJ Ashtray. Uh, what did you see uh, from an, an analytical point? How did they do so well? Yeah, I think especially when a lot of the time you were playing like Ramatra compositions a good amount of the time, you thrive on that mobility and being able to get on top of targets very fast. It's kind of like Spicy Toast was saying, it's all on that tank and that Lucio being like at the hip basically and moving in together. And they did do that beautifully. Uh, and it was really great to see their rotations just seemed like to be on point time and time again. I think back to um, New Junk City on uh, the Bomb Flats map and it just felt like, they were doing a great job of rotating around that center pillar very well and getting on top of Laura, who was like trying to take a flank on this on the sojourn. And it was just very well played. And uh, I don't think I'd like to say I can uh, I can play the Canadian card as well. My uh, mom's side of the family is Canadian, I actually lived in Calgary for a time of my life. So very proud of them. I think I can play the Canadian card as well. I visited there one time for grand finals of Overwatch League. So Practically hey, Canadian. Also play the Canadian card. My favorite All hockey right. team is Ottawa Senators. Uh, so you and LaFon should talk. You and LaFon should talk. Seriously, I, we do uh, talk. Yeah, I mean about Ottawa. I mean like, it's exactly. Ottawa, so I, it's okay. I, I'll forgive you for this time. But Alex, uh, coming from the support uh, side of things, uh, you, you can probably get into a lot more of the micro of what Nyla uh, and Spicy Toast were doing. Uh, on the other side, I mean, we saw good stuff from both support lines. It was either, you know, getting a, a crucial sound barrier or getting a quick Suzu down at times. What did you see from you, Tal, that really turned the tide for them? Honestly, one of the largest things I saw from the support line of uh, Utah, besides just, you know, doing a ton of healing, was the fact that they were just surviving. I mean, surviving the support line is such an important thing. There was many fights where, you know, Mythos would go in, they would pick off both DPS, but then it would be the two supports alive with their tank, and then they would just lose the fight over time then because, I mean, while, um, like, say, the Moira was dead on the side of Mythos, so then they would just, over time, just burn them down because the sustain is just way too strong. And we saw that time and time again, and I really noticed this, especially on uh, New Junk City. Um, yeah, to, to piggyback off that just a little bit, it just made a light bulb in my head pop off because a lot of the times, Mythos, I'm watching these fights and they're losing their Lucio very early in the fights. And I mean, especially when you're playing Ramach, as I talked about, needing that speed is important. You're just down to healer after that. And as you talk, as Head Rumors talking about, sometimes it's just about staying alive and being there for your team as a support. Yeah, it's it's hard, it's hard to say like where exactly, you know, the um the breakage is is it you know the other support not peeling for the other one as much is it the fact that um maybe they're just playing a little too aggressively or the, or maybe it's just a difference in target priority like you know maybe um ut is focusing the supports a little stronger whereas you know the dps are being focused by mythos it's, it's really difficult to tell without actually like you know sitting down and going to the details but i think that had a very large effect on things all right and joker i mean tank play I mean, obviously, we didn't have Dizzy in, which we were all looking forward to because they are a very dynamic tank. But Kirsten, I think, was possibly on one today. They were absolutely annihilating, no pun intended on that. Yeah. They were just eviscerating the members of Mythos Gamera. What did you see uh, in that tank lineup uh, that really impressed you the most? Uh, I think I, uh, I have to agree with you. The Annihilation um, were very, very good. And it, it really de uh, depends, especially since Lucio is obviously the, the most prevalent support in the game, right? So you, you're going into a sound barrier most likely when uh, you're popping an Annihilation to still get value out of the Annihilation is huge because, you, I mean, you still have to be able to follow up with the punches, with the pummels, right? Uh, and we saw that a lot from Kirsten. We saw their name come up in the kill feed a lot during those Annihilations, during everything as well. Um, and I mean, again, it all comes, uh, stems back to, I'm, I'm going to announce it. I'm going to announce it, Billy. I'm going to announce the MVP. I'm going to, it's my show now. No, no, you, you, I'm not going to do that. No. Uh, uh, <laughs> just, 
I was gonna, Why I was would gonna you know. derail me like that? I don't understand. <laughs> Billy just gives, just you, gives like you one that. look. And you're like, I'm yeah, sorry. That was like I'm the sorry. angry parent <laughs> face. Like, what <laughs> are you doing, child? I'm gonna like, like, like when the child's in the grocery store you, messing Joshua. up and the parents give the child a look. That was Billy's look. <laughs> yeah. Well, because I was going to say, because of the, well, I was going to say because of Nyla, uh, able to uh, stay alive. I, I, won't, I won't say it yet. Right? Um, Nyla was able to also allow uh, Kirsten to get as much value as you possibly want to, especially with a character that was very good. Um, keeping them alive. Suzu's very important as well. Uh, but, um, I mean, I, I think just with Kirsten, uh, just in general, they were able to do uh, everything because of their support role. Their, their supports were, were just attached to them to the hip, right? Yeah, I mean, we'll talk about it. Uh, the MVP is from Utah. It is going to be Nyla, as uh, Joker was alluding to. I will throttle you at a later point in time. When I get my hands around your throat, I'm going to absolutely snap it off like a chicken. However, uh, yeah, I mean, Nyla was uh, hands above everybody else. And we were looking at, we were talking about the, uh, the healing numbers, especially uh, after oh uh, gosh after our hybrid map i mean that was insane yeah. they had 17k da or healing uh, and the damage wasn't too bad either had 4k damage on top of that so they were kind of blending in uh, a little bit more than what i usually see kirikos do but i mean rammer we talked about this we talked about the supports the dps i mean was very uncommon we saw genji <laughs> torbjorn a couple of times i mean how does that work uh, honestly because Torbjorn shouldn't be able to survive in such a brawl-heavy environment. Well, I don't know if I would fully agree with that, because I feel like Tor is actually, in a kind of like a brawl he's actually is a pretty decent survivor, because, I mean, he already has a decent amount of armor himself. He can overload and get even more on the overhealth. I, I think he actually is a pretty tanky character overall, um, and especially, like, you know, if you're concerned about them playing a little more divey into you, or even just you want to have that area of denial when you put the, his ultimate everywhere, like, I think I think he does have a place in that comp. All right, Listen, well, go ahead. And I've seen Pelican and OWCS playing Torbjorn in a match. You know it can happen <laughs> in an area like CGL. That's all I'm gonna say. Joker, final thoughts. It was great stuff. I, I was happy I'm wrong because um, we saw a really good showing coming in from Utah. Um, uh, again, I, I really like. I think if we play this again. I think it could be a toss-up, right, with with other players, right. But again, like um, like Spicy Toast said, it doesn't really matter because today was the game that when the, the today was when the game was played, not tomorrow or whenever Dizzy's PC was running, and they showed up when it mattered most. Right. Well, that's going to do it for our NA Grandmaster Tier uh, Grand Finals. Once again, Utah taking the 4-0 clean sweep over Mythos Gamera. Thanks to Blizzard uh, filling in for Hippie this week. And uh, for us as Hippie is uh, dealing with moving issues and being in Kansas, which is always a fun thing of itself. Uh, thanks to Little Joe, Megalass, uh, and Zeusor uh, on the production desk for us, making us look good, sound good, and uh, bringing you guys all this wonderful action. We are going to take a little bit of an extended break but we should be back in about 40 minutes for the next deck segment as we have uh, our second of three grand finals here on Super Saturday for the conclusion of the MTT 13. Folks, don't go away. We'll be back with you in just a few minutes. We'll see you later. <laughs> 